Okay, so we're talking about selection now. So just just quickly recap on the last um, option, uh, last lesson we did, which was about layers. And this again is is doing selections for layers really. So just to recap, I can create an adjustment. Let's say uh, uh, brightness contrast, and I can adjust. And that automatically creates a layer which also has a mask on it. So I can pick up my paintbrush. I can pick up black, which will take away the effect. It's a bit hard. Let's just move that down a little bit. And I can remove that effect uh, from the object. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that, that works quite well in, in many circumstances. But when you're getting hard edged items, you can see where I've I've gone over the edge. And it can be quite tricky trying to m match that in. Mm. Um, the only advantage I, I find is that when doing things like contrast or curves, by, by matching it in, you you can like blend the edge. And it almost gives like a shadow effect, so that that can be quite nice. But that's that was it. that was uh, last week's lesson. So I'll uh, undo that and just go back to where we were. So first selection tool, and probably the one will you'd use ninety percent of the time is um, the selection brush tool. And what you do is you would go over your item you want to select, and you can see it snapping to the edges and that's because up here I've got snap to edges turned on mm. and as I move across it will pick up more and more of the object I'm picking if I make the brush smaller much smaller <laughs> it will pick up smaller detail so basically if you're picking big areas use a big brush if you want to be delicate use uh, a smaller brush. Hmm. Um, oh, we've got three participants now. Hi, Mike. Can you hear me? He doesn't. Oh. Hi, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Literally just started. Yeah. So, uh, we're started with a selection tool brush which is on the left hand side I'll clear my selection and basically I'll just reiterate the bigger the brush the bigger the area and it will snap to the edges if you've got the snap to edge tool on tick box on and then as you get into closer areas you can reduce the size of the brush and it will be more delicate in what it selects so I can just run along and select select edges. And we'll just quickly go through and just pick some of these edges here, some of which we're going to have problems with, but that's the point, is that uh, we'll find out how to make the selection better. So there we go. Um, and if I come back up here, just select the rest of the tail plane. There we go. All right, and I'll quickly select it. Oops, gone too far. So in, in the case where I go too far, if I hold the Alt key down whilst I click, it will do the opposite. All right. So I can I can go too far, hold the Alt key, bring it back in. And sometimes that, that can help because uh, if I go too far here, and bring it back it's more likely to pick the outer edge so we've got our basic selection not quite just need the uh, cockpit hood there and oops we haven't done this bit here let me just reduce the size of the brush and just quickly select that area there you can see it's starting to have trouble because the difference between the blue and the grey is is not very much. So 
on these uh, yellow edges, it tends to be more precise because of the contrast uh, with the background. So if we just go across here. Right, so we've got a basic selection. Let's just come down here a little bit. And if I use that, that if I tried to cut that out and use it, it would look like I'd cut it out, <laughs> to be quite frank. If I wanted to, say, do a do a loo and replace the background uh, with some nice countryside and sky, um, it would it would look very much cut out. So we need to refine it. So up here we've got a, a, a refine button. So if I just click on that, it'll take a second. And what it does is everything you've selected is normal, the plane. Anything outside the selection is red. Now you can change the color of that. So um, you can say uh, the default is show as an overlay. You can say show it as black. There we go, black. Um, show it as white. Um, show it as transparent. So you can go through those and you can see that makes it look even worse. It's even more jagged. So if we go back to there, um, right, just hit the refine button again, get the dialogue back up. Okay, so I'll just put that there for the moment. Now, the first thing to note is these four buttons here, matte, and the ones I tend to use most is obviously matte, foreground, and background. Matte basically means I'll pick an edge, I'm, I'm, oh, here, down here, where it's gone wrong slightly. And if I pick up a, a reasonable size brush, if I just run along the edge, Hang on, let me cancel that. Uh, go, right, just a second. Right, refine. Right, thinking about it, that's better. Okay, if I go along the edge, you see it painting. Yes. And it's saying basically resample that area and you get a better, better selection. And again, the size of the brush matters. So um, in this case, it's not, can't really differentiate that bit. But if I come along here, it will refine that edge. Now, the reason you've got foreground background is sometimes it, it can't do it. So you have to say, this bit here is foreground. And you can see it pulling I just run up the, the edge there a little bit, hmm. pulling it back. So if I just run on the bit and say this is foreground, it gives the uh, computer a, a better a better chance of selecting the right the right side. So we can you can go around the edges. Uh, Matt works normally quite well. Uh, and of course you can do the opposite. You can say no, this this is definitely background. Um, I don't see where I could, well, if I just, if I just cheat and say that's background and it will mat it out, but it is actually foreground. So we'll just re reselect that and then just make the brush a bit smaller and just say, this is definitely foreground. And you can see it pop out to the edges. And basically, you can spend as much or as little time on this as as you, as you like. Obviously, um, the more time you spend, the better. And the same here uh, on the blades. Now, this is the interesting thing, is that blades, are, or anything like this, is a little bit awkward, because they're fading out, really. So, and as you can see, it's picked up that little bit there. And I'll just bring the blade down a little bit. There we go. That's a bit better. Down to here. You can see it just starting to include the bits I want. OK, 
Okay, but you'll even see that the matting is fading from like quite a strong pink to a lighter to a lighter pink where it's uh, shading. So let's say uh, let's explain some of the other smaller items here. Uh, border. If I if I zoom up on that area there, if I increase the border, you're basically add it, adding an extra bit to it. You can you can see it slightly. So that's the border it's it's working within. Um, smooth. It will show up if I do exaggerate it. So it's rounding all the edges. So in this case, I don't want that. If anything, I probably want smooth nothing. Okay. And feather is is give an edge, um, feather out, uh, make a smooth transition. You can see it's it's still selected, but it's paler, and that that can be quite useful because it 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 um, it means it's well literally feathers in with with whatever's in the background. Okay, so let's just say we're we're happy with that and just hit apply and you get the you get the marching ants round the round the shape but it's it's a little bit better than that really um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit create a mask so i just tap on that button there right down here and it's added a mask and taken out the 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 background so what i can do is um if I go to another picture, I've got, just so happen, to have a, a cloud picture up here. And I can say, copy that, go back to the plane, and say, edit, paste. Now, it's pasted it. It's on top, so it's covering everything. So what we want to do is move that down to the lowest. It's going to be the bottom, the bottom layer. Now, leave it there. Uh, we still got the marching ants. If you want to get rid of them, you can just hit uh, deselect or select, deselect, control D. Um, I'll just hit this button here. And you can see what it's done. It's feathered, feathered the edges of the, of the propeller, which has actually given it quite a good, um, uh, a good impression in that it doesn't look cut out while the, the, the actual, edges here are, are, are nicely uh, merged into the background. So that's, that's the first bit there. Now, as we did last week, I can actually click on the layer. And if I hold the Alt key down and left click on the mask, it'll actually show me what the mask looks like. And as you can see, round the propeller br blade, it's graduating to gray rather than being a very hard black edge which would make it look cut out that's what you'd, you'd have a hard edge if you didn't use the refine button um, again if I hold the control key down and click on the background uh, actually I'll move off first Let's move off go back on holding control key mask gives you the march, marching ang, ang, ants back now what that can be useful for is I've made this selection. I might want to do something else, and it will use the same mask. So what I could what I could do here is um, let's add another. Um, boom, 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 boom. Let's do a curves. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I want the blacks to be blacker, and I want the whites to be whiter or the lighter areas so I'm basically I'm adding contrast into the picture but what you can see is it's making absolutely no difference to the background because it's using the same uh, selection um, mask so that, that can be really handy um, so if ever you want to reuse one of the masks you've already created just click on it uh, let me clear it. Clear. Uh, click on. Uh, hold Control key. Click, and you get get the um, marching ants back. And then you can apply that to any other um, 
layer adjustment you want to want to uh, add. So <coughs> I'm going to add a, a HSL and uh, increase the um, saturation. As you can see, that's probably a little extreme, uh, but I can I can increase it um, to whatever level you want. And then when I'm happy, I can deselect. So if I um, look at the curves, oops. No, it's not on that dialog, is it? No, get rid of that. Um, I can quickly um, just take it back to I've done nothing. That's what the original picture looked like. And redo everything. And that's what the picture looks like now. So that's um, um, the main uh, selection uh, you can do. Um, there are other other methods. I would say I use that 90% of the time, 95%. Um, there is a little magic wand. I think that's basically it's an older tool that people don't use much these days because the other one's so much better. And you, you can just click it, and it does like it tries to do a magic pick out um it looks like i've left behind the threshold oh it's because i'm on the adjustments curve let me clear that um let's go back to the main picture uh so yeah i just click click once or i can drag a little bit um and i can make selections in that mode um it's okay for the things that are of one color as you can see here it's picking out different different shades i i much prefer the uh, uh the actual paint tool myself but it is is available there and here you've got um let me clear oh looks like my computer's having second thoughts I'll just give it a second it might come back Hmm. Appear to have uh, locked up. Uh, what I shall do? Let's just uh, end that, and I'll restart uh, Affinity. And then share uh, affinity again. Okay, can we see affinity again? Oh. Not yet. No, didn't think so. And share affinity. There we go. Is that oh. better? Okay, unfortunately, I've got my plane uh, no it's quite good affinity do you do get a recovery um, if, if you crash it um, right so you can um, you've got simple um, rectangle rectangular shapes and if I go down click on the little, little uh, uh, arrow in the corner um, elliptical columns and freehand but I'll use this uh, as an example so uh, I could take that piece here, and you might say, okay, I'll uh, copy that, and then, come on, uh, paste it. And you can see here I've got you know, a copy of the, the letters there, and I could use the move tool and, and move that move that around so we could pretend that this this plane is actually ZZ and uh, I could use my erase tool make sure I'm on the, the right layer and, and take out the take out the S for instance um, taking out too much there there we go just take out that there we go and now we've got a, a ZZ plane so just simple selections like a square can be handy when you're doing copy and paste. Uh, that's where I generally 
find it handy or where you want to do you know copy it and mirror it or something along those lines uh, the freehand tool uh, I don't like it. it it's you know it works but you know it's quite hard to control you know it, it can be good to just lasso something so um, you know if I just wanted that area there and do a copy of that it's a very quick way of just getting it but you might as well just use the square tool as far as I can see um, but you know have a play with it if you want um, so they're, they're the different selection brushes there is one a node tool um, sorry a pen tool and you you can you can actually do um, like curves with it, and you might see um, Paint Shop Pro. Uh, sorry, um, it's quite common uh, to be used in uh, uh, Photoshop. Um, you see quite a lot of people using it, but I find I find the other tool so much better. Um, and what you what you can do is uh, as you well what they would do is something like this you know and bring you can adjust the uh, curvature you can bring it in and you can you know it's, it's it's almost like using geometric tools you know you can just go around the edge um, and if I click there and there and then I can I can play with the let's move that around there I can play and fit fit the shape so that that can be quite useful uh when when you've done that you just hit the convert button um and that will convert it if well i haven't closed it but yeah if, if i I'm found not. simon yeah i found that very useful if i had a background which was really complex okay. and i wanted to cut something out yeah it's it's one of those tools which i found very useful when uh, when I did the uh, one particular shot where the background was so confusing yeah. that I found doing this around the shape actually made it easier to get a, a selection I wanted. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely some advantages because you, yeah. you, you can, you can, with the free hand, that's awful, I find. Yeah. But this, you can, be, you can be very, very precise if you want to. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah, by all means, give it a go. I... I I guess because I mainly do wildlife, mm. um, I, I'm going around hares and such like. But I've I've seen people go around this on macro where it's the legs of a spider, <laughs> you know, mm. and they're being very, very, very precise. Yeah. Um, it can be quite time consuming, um, but you, you get what you want basically. So uh, that 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 can be quite good. Uh, let's just wind that back a little bit. There we go. Let's go back to there. So there's various methods of of making selections, and whenever you've made a selection, then if you create uh, an adjustment layer, it will only be applied to that area. Um, if uh, let me undo that again. Uh, let me just quickly. Um, the other thing you can do. Uh, I've got a building here somewhere. Uh, street. There we go. So if I just open up street, uh, no. Okay. Um, so if I want to select the the background here, the sky, for instance, um, right. So just with that, it's already gone around and selected the edges by snapping um, and again you you can use the refine tool let's just uh, go in there and you know pick up these little bits of bushes here a little bit there and you can just go around um, pick that up maybe um, pick up that um, you know and so forth yeah, we'll have we'll have the bird. <laughs> okay, now 
it was easier to select the sky than the buildings. So if I hit apply, I've got my selection. There's a handy little button here called invert selection. So at the moment, I'm working on the uh, sky area. So if I add uh, brightness and contrast, so if I bring down the brightness a little bit and whack up the contrast, you can see the hopefully get the sky getting a little bit more darker. Um, that's okay. And then I could go invert it and um, go back to the background and this time do a curves. This will be applied to the foreground only. So I could I could lighten up the buildings and it's having no effect on the sky. So that's, um, that's quite useful. Now let's just move that up there um, and get rid of the marching ants. And again, if I do Alt click on the, on the curves, that's one view. And if I Alt click on the brightness, I get the opposite. So that there's there's your masks there. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. Now I'm just going to show you one more method because we're going to run out in ten minutes, and I don't want the uh, uh, thing to just cut off uh, immediately. So what I'll do is I'll revert that. There are so many other ways um, of doing selection. So we've used manual selection tools basically but you could select by color range. So reds, greens, blues, tonal. Um, so if I select highlights, you'll see it's now selected the sky mainly. Um, if I do uh, select alpha is, is select any transparent areas, uh, or you can do select uh, sampled color, which that would work quite well on um, the plane, so because I've got a fairly uniform background there. So I could go select um, sampled color. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, it is picking up the bits of the plane, but I've got a tolerance here, so I, I can I can reduce the tolerance until I'm happy. And you see how that selected that that item quite well, which it didn't do um, the other way. So that, that's a nice way of doing uh, a selection there. So that's worth thinking about. And again, if I um, uh, apply an adjustment, oh sorry, I want to invert that because that's the blues selected. Well, I suppose I could change the color of the sky. So. Um, um, HSL, add a bit more vibrance to the sky, It'll make it look really silly, or I might just want to uh, take take the vibrance out of the sky completely, and then increase the luminosity. I can almost get myself a, a plane on a white background. So think think that you can select by by other other methods. Um, one I saw, which I thought was quite good, is if I clear that, um, was actually to, to use um, a threshold. So I've created a threshold layer here, and what it's doing is, over here is white, and as the, the dark things come in, what it's giving me is quite a good selection along the the, the edge of the area there and what I can do is just say okay um, merge those visible items there we go um, and in fact I can just delete that now don't need that um, oh. I did duplicate instead of delete um, and on here I can pick up my uh, paintbrush, black, and just make that, get rid of it here. And I've got myself a mask. 
And what I can do with that is just say, okay, this layer here, um, rasterize to mask. Okay, so now it's, uh, what I probably want to do is, um, uh, there we go, invert that. And that's another way of doing a mask. And you can see the selection in the, uh, let me get rid of, let's use the move tool. It's got into all of the trees um, because it's just using the, the, the color and the, or sorry, the um, uh, lightness of the light between the tree leaves uh, to do your selection. So you get a very, very precise selection doing it that way. And again, um, Alt, click on the layer and there's there's our mask and the nice thing about masks I can I can just go back pick my brush which is huge and um, take out all the straggly bits you know and, and just tidy it up there we go and uh, go back to the background and those little straggly bits were probably little bits of um, aerials and what have you but I could I could go onto the mask and go white paintbrush and you there, there's the item so I could come in here and just repaint that repaint that back in it's quite cool there we go tidy that up so I can actually see what I'm I'm doing right here there we go Okay, so that that's quite useful. And then of course, uh, where's my where's my clouds? Just drag my clouds in. Uh, edit, copy, back to here. Edit, paste. Of course, it's on top, so just drag that to the bottom. And sorry, no, drag it up to. Yeah, there. But I want to drag the mask onto onto the background there, and then bring that background. That's a clever effect. Yeah, it wasn't what I was after. <laughs> I've just <laughs> the wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Get yeah. them in the right order. So. Um, you know, you can come back here. So yes, I obviously I didn't have a background, so I couldn't see what I was doing. So I can go in and manually paint in those bits I missed, or do a better job in the first place. <laughs> but, <coughs> uh, but it gives you the idea. Um, I think the meeting's going to close in a moment. You, you get 40 minutes for free, and then it just uh, bombs out. So hopefully that's some food for thought about making making your selections. Uh, whether it be uh, with a paint tool uh, and manually going around and refining or using some lasso tools or using other methods such as um, uh, tonal ranges, color ranges, alpha ranges to make some selections. Um, one really useful one, uh, what do you call it? It's um, uh, I've forgotten the name. Um, if I if I click on a layer, uh, sh Control Shift. No, crazy. There we go. And what it's um, done is create like a black and white image of it. Um, I still had some stuff selected from the previous one. So you can use that as a mask. Um, and that can give you some nice luminosity effects. But I think I'll leave that for another another day. Because I think uh, we've run out of time to explain that too much. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Was there any questions? Uh, no, thank you, Simon. I think that's been very useful. Okay, good. Yeah, yes. Yeah, um. All right, thank you very much. Uh, see you Monday, hopefully. Right.